video is all about surgery and guinea pigs and I hope it will be useful for anyone who finds themselves in that awkward position where you've got to make the decision whether or not to put your guinea pig through surgery. I'm going to talk about the things you should consider before you make that decision but there's a few points that I just want to get out before we get started and that is first of all I'm not medically trained, I'm not talking from a vet's perspective but from the perspective of an experienced donor who has done a lot of research and reading on the topic and who has recently put one of her own guinea pigs through surgery and secondly all cases are different this video relates more to cases where there is time to consider other treatment options guinea pig is otherwise healthy rather than those emergency situations where you've got to make the even more difficult decision between surgery or euthanasia um, so let's get started so this is Twiggler she had a spay operation about a month ago to treat ovarian cysts and she is going to help me talk about the number one consideration when thinking about surgery and that is do you have an exotics trained vet that has a lot of experience with guinea pigs not all vets receive the same training or have the same experience with guinea pigs just like any animal and many general vets might not see guinea pigs that often and may not have ever operated on one so I think it's worth traveling further and perhaps paying more to see a more experienced vet and that's what I did with Twiglet we traveled about 25 miles to see an exotics vet and I'm so so glad I did. The vet really knew what she was talking about. She'd done a lot of spay operations on guinea pigs before and I really had confidence in her that I was making the right decision when I followed her advice to go for surgery. But even if you trust your vet then don't hesitate to ask them questions like how many times have they done the operation? What is their success rate? What medications do they give? Even what anaesthetic they use? How long does the operation last for? And what other problems that you might experience after the operation? These are all questions that an experienced vet should be able to answer immediately with no hesitation and by asking them you can be sure that they have the experience to treat your guinea pig properly. Next up is to consider the other treatment options available. So surgery in guinea pigs is quite risky and not all guinea pigs make good surgical candidates. So you need to be aware of what other alternatives you can take. And again, if you have an experienced, knowledgeable vet, then they should be able to talk through all these alternatives with you. So for example, with Twiglet, I knew that there was hormone therapies available and my vet discussed the different options and the different prices. Ultimately, and because Twiglet was young and otherwise healthy, we both thought she, that she had a good chance of surviving the operation and recovering well. Um, so we felt that in her case, um, surgery was a good option. This might not be the case for older female guinea pigs, for example, who might not survive an operation and therefore hormone therapy might be the treatment for them. Another example that springs to mind is bladder stones, which is also unfortunately really common in guinea pigs. If you have a guinea pig that has or perhaps already had surgery for bladder stones or is older and not a good surgical candidate, then you and your vet might decide to manage their condition through your diet, through their water intake, and if they do pass a stone, then help them through it with medications and things like that. And hopefully, you know, be aware of the problem. And if it does get worse and worse and worse, then then maybe surgery as a last resort. Another one that springs to mind is lumps. So guinea pigs get lumps quite often and um, it's actually quite unusual for lumps to be cancerous although guinea pigs can get cancer especially on younger guinea pigs it's quite rare so if your guinea pig has a lump the best option might be to just leave it see if it goes down in size naturally although having said that an operation to remove a lump that's fairly near the surface of the skin carries much less risk than an invasive surgery such as a spay operation for example my next point is to think about the risks associated with having operations done on guinea pigs. Um, there's a risk with general anaesthetic, putting any animal under general anaesthetic carries a risk, but with guinea pigs it's greater than with other pets. Um, there was a study carried out in 2006 that estimated the risk of anaesthetic related death in guinea pigs to be 1 in 26, which is 3.8%, which does seem quite high and is more than in dogs, cats, rabbits and even other small animals such as rats and hamsters. Other than general anaesthetic there's always a risk that the guinea pig might not make it through the operation. This is probably if there's other health problems or the health problem was more extensive and much worse than the vet first thought which you can't really be fully sure of until they're having a look inside them. 
But the biggest risk is probably from complications after the operation. Guinea pigs need to eat constantly and if they can't get their guts moving after an operation and if they can't if their body can't get over the trauma of the operation then they may die because of that. They also might get infected after the operation which is something that you've got to look out for and be aware of and then you've got to consider general things like the age of the guinea pig and their general health. Other things like heart problems and respiratory problems can increase the risk of surgery as well as just the, how old the guinea pig is. Is. Something else to consider is the cost of the treatment. I'm just going to cover this briefly because I think any responsible pet owner will have money set aside for when they need veterinary treatment or they'll know that they can borrow money if the worst comes to the worst. Um, you really shouldn't take on a guinea pig or any other pet if you're not prepared to pay for veterinary treatment. And also vet costs for guinea pigs are generally not as expensive as for other animals, here in the UK at least. So for example with Twiglet, her operation and all the medicines that she got afterwards came to just over £80, which I thought was very reasonable considering that it was a very experienced vet that did the operation. And all in all with her consultation fees, when I took her in for her ultrasound and she had some antibiotics in the meantime as well, it probably came to just under £200, which isn't that bad when compared with other animals. I think it's more to do with the size, uh, the cost of materials, the cost of drugs, that kind of thing. So, so Something to bear in mind that guinea pig surgery and treatment isn't that expensive compared to other animals but you should definitely have money set aside for when you need to pay for that. And finally it's really important to consider and be prepared for post-operative care not only in terms of what the vet does and what medications they prescribe after the operation but what you do when you bring your guinea pig home. You need to have a special area set up for them where they're not going to hurt themselves. You need to be able to get the medications into them. If they're off their food then you need to be prepared to syringe feed them. There's a lot of information out there on post-operative care so I'm going to provide some of the most useful links I've found on the internet in the description box and if you are thinking about surgery for your guinea pigs then I highly recommend that you go and read those links and really learn about what you need to be prepared for. So that's everything for this video I hope you found it useful please give me a thumbs up if you did or if you think it might be useful for other people watching um, if you have any questions about the video then please comment below in the comment section I will do my best to try and get back to you but if you want to make message me and make sure that I could definitely read it and get back to you then please message me on my Facebook page which is linked below um, that's really the only place where I read um, and respond to messages so contact me on there if you want to get in touch which I'm more than happy for people to do but in the meantime I hope you enjoyed the video thank you ever so much for watching and that's goodbye from me and